What's up guys? It's Pacific Boys back at it again with another intro and video. It's our final day of diving in the next four months. It'll be a great time in the ocean and honestly, it's a bittersweet goodbye, but we're gonna have a blast out there in the ocean. Mahalo. All right, guys, welcome back to another episode. We're dude, what the? <laughs> dude, I, that, that's such a good intro. Like you said, this is going to be our last time spearfishing in a long time. So, going to keep it short and sweet. Let's hop in the water. Hopefully, we get some new. Hopefully, a big uhu comes around. Uh, it would be nice to have some big trevally species come over, too. But don't need to take much. Just take what I need. Enjoy the beauty of the uh, environment. We've got a lot of stuff planned in Alabama, though. It's going to be a lot of hunting, a lot of fishing. The channel's going to keep going. I'm going to visit. We're going to go spearfishing again. So, uh, yeah, it's a good farewell. It's been an awesome ride. Thank you, Hawaii. Let's hop in the water. So, yes, like I said in the intro, this is going to be the last spearfishing trip in a really long time. Unfortunately, I'm heading off to college, which uh, has its pros and cons. The only con I can really think of is that I won't be able to spearfish as much as I have. But I'm just out here to have a good time and grab some food for dinner. I'm out here with my best friend, Jonah Issa, and we're going to have a blast. Before we get to the spot, we uh, bump into a bunch of white tip reef sharks. These sharks are very common in Hawaiian waters and are probably the most common shark that you will find, especially if you're spearfishing in shallow coral reefs. White tip reef sharks are pretty lethargic, but can be very, very spunky. Most divers will find them coming after their fish after they speared one. You do want to be aware of these sharks because as they are typically calm in nature, they will definitely go after your fish if you leave it unattended. For instance, this was a small manini that I speared. I was just showing my sister kind of how to spear fish. And then all of a sudden I turned around and this huge white tip reef shark just came right out of nowhere. Um, so definitely want to be cautious. As long as you're keeping your eyes on them, uh, it'll be okay. But just something to be looking for. Even right here, this is on a separate trip. I'm just kind of coming back from a dive. We're almost inshore and just kind of like looking around and this little one comes right out of nowhere and they will really come out when you least expect it. So it's just important to remain calm uh, and just keep an eye out as you're diving and especially go with the partner. Going with the partner will make the trip more enjoyable and safer in the future. Decided to do a little quick stop and just film the sharks. They're pretty calm right now because the water is really clear. So this is a good sign. We're not gonna be spearing any fish in shore. So I'm not too worried about these sharks, but I have spotted a few out at the spot that we're going to. So it's gonna be important to keep an eye out. These sharks are definitely curious and will come up to you without hesitation, but they also like to keep their space. As long as you're respecting nature, nature will respect you and there's nothing to worry about. Film this shark swimming away. Now it's time to go out, get our dive on, go collect some fish for the family. So right here is the first drop of the day. I noticed a pretty nice sized moo pile out in the distance. And for those of you who have hunt moo, you kind of know exactly how they are and what they like. So I'm creeping underneath this ledge. You really want to conceal as much of your body as you can. I find a really good grip on this rock and I start dusting the sand and I put my head straight down to the bottom. Moo are a type of species of fish that will not come in close if you're looking at them. For some reason, they can almost sense if you're looking at them, so it's important to keep your eyes straight down to the floor. After about 10 seconds or so, you can slowly start to look up and hopefully that moo pile is coming close. just a little bit of patience. The moo pile is starting to finally come in close, but I'm starting to run out of breath and I'm gonna try and make a shot real quick. Obviously I spooked them and hit my head on this rock instead of coming up with the fish. Definitely was enough to make Jonah laugh though. Here's the second drop of the day. I didn't see anything from the surface, so I was kind of going into this one blind but I just wanted to see what would be attracted to me and what would be curious uh, for my presence. Kind of just sitting there and it really doesn't take too long 
for uh, Papio to come over to me. Just wait a few more seconds and you'll see him come into frame. Do a little bit of dusting, a little bit of grunting. Sure enough, this Papio comes straight over. This one was definitely legal size, but it was a bit too quick and honestly decided to let him go eventually. Ended up not getting anything on this drop, but we're gonna continue to go to the spot and hopefully we'll find some fish there. So right here, you can see that I'm starting to take one band off of my spear gun. We're at the spot now and I noticed something interesting at the very bottom of the substrate. It didn't look natural and it didn't look like it should be there. So I'm gonna dive down and get a closer look. Now if you can see there right in the middle of the screen, it's kind of like a white oval shape. Upon further review, I figured out that it was a peacock flounder and I've never shot one of these, nor have I been able to see one of this size. So I decided to take this shot. This fish is a very, very beautiful fish. It's one of the only flatfish species in Hawaii, so finding them uh, is pretty rare, but if you have an eye, you can see just how common they truly are, especially around sandy areas. I see a lot of baby flounders in the shallows, but it's hard for me to find these bigger ones out deep. If you think finding them is difficult, filleting them is even harder, so it's definitely a hassle, but the meat is delicious, super white, and I would highly recommend bringing it home if you ever do find one. Put this guy on the stringer, let's go out, grab some more fish, see what we can find. So right here, I saw a bunch of peel from the surface, and I'm dropping down to see if I can grab one for dinner. It's starting to become pretty late, this was a pretty quick dive, and so I'm trying to be quick. Um, but take my time and remain calm on the bottom at the same time. The peel are one of my favorite fish to eat. Um, Golden Trevally is most ideal, but I do love getting these small papillos as well. Haven't found a big Amiwi yet, but we're working on it. Saw this one out and picked him off. Um, definitely did not get a good shot on him. I'm surprised he didn't tear off, but fortunately I was able to eventually get him tangled on this coral so that I can grab a hold of him. Now I tried to untangle the line. I noticed myself running out of breath, so I decided to take my knife and just dispatch him while he was down there. This is really important to do if you're ever stuck in this situation, just quickly dispatch your fish. And if you don't have time to do that, just go up to the surface and pray that it doesn't tear off. A lot of Spiros will die because of this. They'll try and just untangle their fish and think they have enough time when really the adrenaline is covering up the fact that they're running out of oxygen quick and have the potential to die. As I go up to the surface though, there's always a risk that sharks are gonna get your food. So as I'm up here discussing with my friend Jonah, I look down and I notice a baby white tip reef shark has come out of the coral and is trying to take my fish. So I quickly go down, tell him no, and I spook him off pretty easily. Uh, sharks typically don't wanna have anything to do with you. So if you make your presence known, if you don't act like prey, they'll pretty much stay away and get off of your fish. And if they don't, we all have to pay taxes at some point. So might as well do it now. I went back down to see if I can get some footage of that baby shark because that is the smallest white tip reef shark that I've ever found. And I believe that if I just let him try and gnaw on the fish, he probably wouldn't have made it back with more than a fin. Looking at the stringer, we don't really need too much. I ended up getting a small aveo aveo on the way back as well, which tasted really good, but unfortunately did not get that on film. We decided to head back, call it a day, and we had a really, really delicious meal coming up. That's all there really is to this video. Um, it was a lot of fun making it. Uh, what a wonderful trip too. It was, it was such a blessing to be out there with my best friend. Um, yeah, we were able to cook up this fish. It was really delicious. I'll just let the rest of the little clips flow and I uh, hope you enjoy your day. Uh, God bless. I'll see you on the next adventure.